and that they might have it more abundantly. See, when, when you give your life to Christ, he doesn't take life away. He gives us more abundant life. Jesus also said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So whatever joy we have, the Lord adds his joy to our joy and thereby makes our joy full. Is there anybody here that's got a full joy in Jesus? Included in my assignment in Columbus is to convince a new generation to get saved and to stay saved. Uh, some of the persons here today, some of the people that are in this room, some of them, some of you that are watching on Facebook, some of you that are watching on YouTube, you are trying to decide if you're going to break a cycle of spiritual inconsistency where you're in and then you're out where, 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 where you, you get involved and then you back out again you, you, you're trying to decide what's your next level in God others that are here right now are deciding to start a lifelong journey with Christ once and for all yeah, 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 there are people in this room right now that are really thinking about getting saved. They've really been thinking about it. It, it. It's not a matter of how bad things are in their life. It's not a matter of, of how, how uh, afraid they are of going to hell. They, they just, they just want to have a more meaningful relationship with God and they found that, 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 that the way to do that is through giving their life to Christ. And so my objective for this message is to present this congregation with some practical ways to simplify life. And I don't want the new saints, and when I say new saints, I'm not just talking about the new saints in this church, I'm talking about people that are newly saved. I don't want you to think that if you get saved today that this is going to be a bad thing. See, some people feel like getting saved is a bad thing. Oh, Lord, I might as well go ahead and get saved. Bye, world. I'm in so much trouble, I got to run to Jesus. It's not a bad thing. Somebody shout, it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you give your life to Jesus, it, it's, a, it's a good thing. Uh, that, that's, why, that's why the saints used to say uh, my, their, their biggest regret was what took them so long. Well, what took them so long is sometimes they let folk uh, discourage them. But being saved is a wonderful opportunity. And so for those of you, can I preach already? For those of you that are really thinking about how to take your life to a better place, how to make the most of the rest of your days, you, you just need to try Jesus. I thought I would get more amens than that. The three short verses we are discussing today are going to help establish what I call positive daily regiments. There's some things that you can do every day that will make living for God much easier. Uh, there are some things that you can do that will produce a positive and long-lasting outcome. And our, in our text today, Paul is offering uh, some, some final tips in his first letter to the church of the Thessalonians. And, and he, had, he wrote this book to people that he knew. This is a personal epistle. And in chapter 5, verses 12 through 22, he offers some practical duties that Paul knew would help them grow. Uh, let's talk about these and uh, how, why he would say rejoice forevermore. When you consider Paul's mindset and what he tried to convey not only to the Thessalonians, but to all of those that he met. He, he understood that being turned from darkness to light 
was so astounding that it virtually compels ceaseless joy. And I agree with that. I, I, I don't believe the words sad and saints belong together. I, I don't, I, that, that's an oxymoron. I, I don't think saints ought to be sad. I, I, what, what do you mean by that? I, I mean that we have enough benefits to always outnumber any challenges we face. Yeah, yeah, we've got to develop the mentality that says, if I'm sad, it won't be long. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long. That's why the old saints used to challenge the young saints to count your blessings and name them one by one. See, see they knew that, that, that by the time we got to blessing number three or four, Ah, hello somebody. Our pains would pale in comparison to uh, whatever we're going through. When, when you get to get to blessing number four or five, when you start naming your blessings, because see, sometimes life will make you think you got, you got this big old problem and all these little old blessings. But when you start numbering them, when you start thinking about how good God has been to you, you will realize that you may have a big problem, but you, you got bigger blessings. Somebody say amen. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. See, sometimes you got to talk to your soul. Sometimes you got to say, hey, soul, whoa, whoa, hey, what's going on in there? He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are they? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with the loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth my mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle? Somebody it shall count your blessings yeah go home tonight and start counting blessings oh that's what you do when you love the lord you you, you understand that write this down uh, uh, the primary reason saints rejoice so much is because we are elated to be saved material matters are bonuses see see if you get saved for the stuff you're going to miss the whole thing. Material things are the, they are the bonuses. Yes, God's going to supply our needs. Yes, God's going to do some wonderful things for us. But, but the biggest blessing is our salvation. The, the greatest thing is our salvation. Somebody say amen. Paul often reflected on what God had done for him. And Paul would say in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 through 14, he, he reminded everybody that he was a blasphemer, that he was a person persecutor that he was injurious uh, but he said but I obtained mercy uh, because I did it ignorantly in uh, unbelief uh, and he says and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant uh, with faith and love which is in uh, Christ Jesus uh, uh, the end result of Christ uh, in our lives is rejoicing to rejoice is to be glad. Uh, it, it's used frequently throughout the New Testament time. Won't allow me to do it. Uh, but if you, if you would Google the word rejoice and New Testament, a plethora of scriptures would pull up. And if you just started reading through those scriptures, you would understand we are supposed to rejoice. Rejoicing is to feel joy. Uh, rejoicing is uh, to feel happiness it, it's to feel joy it's, it's to feel delight and exuberance and triumph when you rejoice rejoicing doesn't start in the mind rejoicing starts in the heart rejoicing is not a pretense uh, uh, you know it's, it's an authentic feeling that cannot truly be duplicated you, you know people can pretend to praise God have you ever seen somebody play shout 
Have you ever seen somebody play worship, you know? Uh, uh, they pretend, and you know that they're pretending, but have you seen that same person when they're playing shout, soon sometimes the Holy Ghost will hit them for real, and you know, oh no, they're not playing now. That, that's a real worship right there. That, that's rejoicing. We're told in the scriptures to rejoice evermore, which is to be happy always at all times. Somebody say be happy always at all times. I see I have some teaching to do this morning. Uh, rejoicing is different from the modern expressions of what we call praise and worship. In that praise and worship are physical expressions sometimes. But rejoicing is a mindset. If you are going to rejoice, you have to rejoice in your attitude. If you're going to rejoice, you have to have a certain mentality if you're going to rejoice. And that mentality doesn't come and go. That mentality stays with us every day at all times. Uh, uh, you see, if we were to do a battle, you know, uh, between a, a, a praiser and a rejoicer, the young people know what I mean when I say uh, battle. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about, young folk. If you're gonna have a battle between uh, the praiser and the rejoicer, uh, uh, the praiser would come in uh, and the praiser would say, uh, "Let me think about a blessing. Let me get something in my mind that God has done, and now I can praise God for what He's done." But the rejoicer would not have to think about a blessing. The rejoicer is already thinking about how good God is. See, see, when you rejoice, you don't need a blessing to rejoice because you know that God is always good. So you don't have to go and find something to celebrate. You don't have to find a blessing. You don't have to find a miracle. You don't have to find a testimony. You don't have to list your blessings. All you have to know is that God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Ah, the praiser would come back and the praise would say, hold on. I've got my praise now. I'm going to praise God because he made a way. And the praiser is going to say he made a way. And they're going to praise God. Why? Because he made a way. But the rejoicer is going to come and say, all right, it's my turn. I'm not going to praise him because he made a way. The rejoicer is going to say, I'm going to praise him because he is the way maker. See, when you praise him because he's the way maker, you don't need him to make a way. You know making a way is what he does. He just makes ways. So if he makes a way, I'm going to rejoice. If he don't make a way, I'm going to rejoice because he's the, ma the way maker. And there's no way that the way maker won't make a way. Come on, give him praise. See, 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 see write this down. This is going to help you. A sign of spiritual maturity is the ability to rejoice and pray for extended periods of time. As a matter of fact, you have to train yourself to praise God for more than a minute. You, you got to train yourself, like, like work it out. Like, like, like lifting weights, like going to the gym. You know, uh, I, when, when, when I get in the gym, uh, when I first started swimming, I, I could only swim one lap. But then I had to just keep at it, and, and eventually I was able to get in the water and swim for a whole hour. But, but it took me a while to get there. And for those of you who desire to take your relationship to God to another level and you want to start rejoicing evermore, it's going to take some time. You're going to have to sit down and you're going to have to say, you know what, I'm going to rejoice for five minutes straight. Uh, I, I, I'm going I'm to pray for ten minutes straight. And what you'll find is, is that, that when you begin to do that, when you begin to rejoice for, for extended periods of time, what used to seem like a long time becomes not enough time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. While, while, your, while your co-workers sitting in there singing uh, happy birthday while they washing their hands. 
You know, they say sing happy birthday two times, I think, while you wash your hands because of the coronavirus. I, you can sing happy birthday, but why don't you just, uh, worse, why don't you just try rejoicing for, for 20 seconds? Turn that, put that soap on there. Uh, where's Dr. Howard at? Will that work? Put that soap on your hands and say, all right, I'm going to put soap on my hands and I'm just going to spend 20 seconds rejoicing. God, you're good. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. I'm just so happy you're in my life. I don't know what I would do without you. I, I don't know how I would made it. With, I know I didn't make it. I never would have made it without you, Lord. I just love you so much, God. You, you're just so kind. You're just, you're just so wonderful. You, you're just so good to me. I, I just don't know what to do. And, and before you know it, your neighbor going to be sitting next to you washing their hands like, um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I, can I get some of that soap? No, it ain't the soap that's making me feel good. It's, it's the rejoicing. And then when you walk out of there, just keep on rejoicing. Hallelujah. You're the God of my salvation. You're the lover of my soul. Oh, uh, God, I just praise your holy name. Somebody shout rejoice. Yeah, yeah, to rejoice is to be glad. It's to be glad. You're supposed to be glad. It doesn't mean that everything's going well in your life, but it doesn't mean you just because you're having a few problems or you have a major situation does not mean you cannot rejoice. Ah, you got to learn how to rejoice over a period of time and stop being a one praise wonder. Oh, I can praise God. Oh, I praise God. Good. Now, that's it. Somebody shout, praise him forevermore. And the Bible says that we should not only rejoice forevermore, but that we should pray without ceasing. Ah, I call this the paradigm of prayer. Or uh, the perfect posture of prayer. And throughout the centuries, all Christians have understood prayer to lie at the heart of of their spirituality. You cannot have a meaningful relationship with God without praying. And you cannot go from one level to another without prayer. Uh, having a firm rooting of prayer is an absolute essential. Can I just talk a little while longer? Uh, when, you, when you know that your, your, your prayer life is together, then you can also know that everything is going to work itself out. Uh, write this down. I'm trying to help somebody. Ceaseless praying covers the person that is praying. It covers other believers and the concerns of the world we live in. See, 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 the reason some people have a difficult time praying for extended periods of time is they only pray for themselves. But that's not ceaseless praying. He's not saying pray for yourself for 24 hours a day. Bless me, 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 bless me. No wonder you can't pray that long. Or, or only pray for the people that are in your family. But when you pray a ceaseless prayer, you have a long list of things you're interceding about. Paul said it this way in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. He says praying always with all prayer and supplication. Somebody shout in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Somebody say amen. See, see, when you pray in the Spirit, when you, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost will help you learn how to extend your prayer. Uh, when I talk about praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about praying in tongues. Uh, as the Holy Ghost gives you the utterance. When, when you begin to pray in the Spirit, somebody say pray in the Spirit. When you pray in the spirit, you're praying for things, you're praying for situations, you're praying for circumstances, you're praying for things that you do not understand, but God now allows your prayer to go into places that your vocabulary, your knowledge would never take you. I challenge you to spend more time praying in the spirit. 
And I totally agree with Paul as he told Timothy, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So if you're going to get to this level, you've got to understand that our prayer lives are connected to our walk with Christ. They are inexchangeable. You can't expect more revelation from God and less prayer. But when you pray with without ceasing you understand God in different ways and God begins to reveal things to you come on somebody shout amen, amen. finally we see another instruction in the scriptures and he says give thanks let me review a little bit first he said do what rejoice then he says what pray and now he's saying give thanks and he says give thanks why for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says giving thanks always for all things unto god and the father in the name of the lord jesus christ everybody say always for all things say it again always for all things in Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 he says and let the peace of God rule in your heart that uh, uh, that the which all say you are called in one body to be ye thankful so we're supposed to always be thankful listen thanksgiving is the deepest recognition of God's grace I'm convinced, Dr. Lundy, that among the things the saints need to do more of is we need to rejoice more, we need to pray more, and we need to give thanks more. Uh, why? Uh, keep writing. I'm teaching this morning. Giving thanks for everything is a lifeline to sanity. Especially when we understand what everything entails. It's a lifeline to sanity. I hear the Lord saying, slow down. Everything is not only the good things. We all know to give thanks for the good things. But everything is not only the good things. Everything includes the unpleasant things too. The unwanted things. Let, 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 let me teach you. Uh, sometimes you have to turn your ouch into a hallelujah. Sometimes you have to take your pains and turn them into a hallelujah. Why? Because you understand this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Just tell your neighbor, it's the will of God. See, 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 you have to remind yourself that God is not only involved in our good experiences, but God is a God of our bad experiences too. I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, we serve a God. God was not, not off uh, somewhere and something bad happened. No, no, no. God is a God of both the good experiences and the bad experiences. And knowing that negative things are part of the will of God for us is assuring. Uh, every time something bad happens doesn't mean you've done something bad. It's soothing, it's uplifting, it's consoling. But what we've got to learn to do is to give thanks. Look at your neighbor and say, just give thanks. Regardless of what's going on in your life, just give thanks. Whether you get the victory, give thanks. When you're frustrated, give thanks. When we're satisfied, give thanks. When you're disappointed, give thanks. 
Uh, when they roll out the red carpet, give thanks. When you're called in on the carpet, give thanks. When you get it right, give thanks. When you get it wrong, give thanks. Uh, whatever you're going through, when, when the plan works, give thanks. When there's an error in judgment, give thanks. Everybody shout in everything. Give thanks. And as you began to give thanks and understand that this is the will of God, as you began to realize that, as you began to wrap your mind around that, you understand that, that, that God's going to use this thing. God's going to get the glory out of this thing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody here that's going through some things. And you need to know that what you're going through is the will of God concerning you. You need to understand that the same God that taught, brought you to it is going to bring you through it. Woo, I'm going to pause right there for a praise break. Somebody ought to just shout to yourself, the God that brought you to it is going to bring you through it. God's not going to leave you there. He brought you to it because it was his will and he's going to bring you out because it's his will and what you got to do, whether you're going in or coming out, is give thanks. Give thanks. What happens too often, my brothers and sisters, is we forget that one of the reasons Jesus died was to give us something to rejoice about so that we can have confidence when we pray, that we can have peace of mind when we give thanks because we know that God has a plan for our lives. Even in hard times, God has a plan for us because his will for us involves our ultimate success. His will for us will end in great and wonderful praise. So we've got some homework to do with this sermon. Ah, and your homework is to rejoice more. Your homework is to pray more. And your homework is to give thanks more. And whatever you do, once you start giving God the thanks, once you start rejoicing and start praying, uh, make sure you don't stop. And make sure that when you rejoice, you're rejoicing over the joy of the Lord. Make sure you are rejoicing and praying in the spirit. But don't stop. Don't stop. Because sometimes we stop before we finish before God finishes what he intends to do. I've seen it so often. People began to praise God and they began to rejoice and they rejoice for a minute or two. And then afterwards, that's it. But I want you the next time you begin to praise God and you're giving God the praise, I want you to say, no, don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, that's why we have to learn how to praise God without the music. Because what I found is sometimes people are shouting and when the music stops, they stop rejoicing. But tell your neighbor, don't stop. Don't stop rejoicing because the music stopped. Don't stop rejoicing because things ain't going your way. Don't stop rejoicing because you didn't get the answer you wanted from the Lord. Don't stop rejoicing. Tell your neighbor, keep rejoicing. Keep being glad. Keep being happy. Keep being upbeat. Keep your faith in the Lord. Whatever you do, whatever comes your way, don't stop rejoicing. And then you got to learn how to rejoice and pray at the same time. Because he said rejoice forevermore and pray without ceasing. What that means is sometimes you got to learn how to pray and rejoice at the same time. You praying, rejoicing, giving thanks all at the same time. I can rejoice, pray, and give thanks at the same time. Because I'm not going to stop. I'm going to rejoice over the prayer I'm praying and thank him for answering the prayer. I'm going to thank him for working it out. I'm going to thank him for doing what he does. I'm going to love on the Lord. I'm going to rejoice no matter what comes our way. We got this thought in our mind that I will not stop. What Satan wants us to do, sometimes the devil leaves us alone just so we can stop rejoicing. Sometimes he increases his attack just so we can stop rejoicing. 
But I want to I want to make sure you understand that nothing bothers the devil more than a rejoicing saint. It, 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 nothing bothers the devil like a praying saint. A saint that prays without ceasing. A child of God who gives God thanks for everything. I wish I could get three or four more people to jump on your feet and start rejoicing and start praying and start giving thanks like you don't intend to stop. better already don't you well why did you stop keep on rejoicing don't stop don't let up don't back down give thanks give thanks give thanks Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you. I just want to thank you. If I can't run, I'm going to thank you on the ground. But what I will not do, I will not stop. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him while I'm down. I'm going to praise him while I'm down. Because it won't be long before my help comes. And the same praise I gave him when I was down. I'm going to give him when I'm up. Don't wait until the battle is over. Rejoice right now. Rejoice forevermore. Rejoice when your marriage is going well. Rejoice when your marriage is on the rocks. Rejoice when you get the job. Rejoice when you have problems. Whatever you're going through, don't stop. Praise him like your life depends on it. Like your spirit depends on it. Forevermore. Without ceasing. In everything. Don't stop. tell you what to do the scriptures already told us to rejoice evermore I see you sir 
in the blue jean shirt. I see your praise. I see your praise. I see your faith. I see your determination. Stop waiting for a blessing and bless the blesser. You can rejoice your way out of depression. You can rejoice. You can always rejoice. And we should always rejoice. We should be the happiest people in the room. We should be the happiest people in our families. We should be the happiest people in our communities because we're always rejoicing. That's your homework for the rest of your life. Take this home with you. And whenever you find yourself overwhelmed, remind yourself and ask yourself a question. Have I rejoiced lately? Have I prayed lately? Have I given thanks lately? And when the, those answers or any of those answers come back, no, you already know what you have to do. And rejoice and give thanks to whatever you're going through. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God praise.